let's move over to hub models or, or broker models or associate models. They're all the bloody same, self-employed model. You do that. We do. Go on then, what does that look like? Have you always done that? No. So what made you try to get ahead of the curve, I think, of the entrepreneurial mindset and spirit this country is starting to embrace? That's a good one, isn't it? Yeah. Genuinely, genuinely. So I when did you start? Um, the business properly, so let's rewind, 2010, in Croydon, business partner, top bloke, three years later, separate. Rygate, January 2014, bedroom, mobile phone, back to square one. That's where we are now. But I'm not my bedroom. Okay, you're in a farm, which is a very nice farm, by the way. <laughs> very and nice. A, a butty wagon comes around, it's beautiful sandwiches. Yeah. Okay, so when did you decide, instead of taking employees on, that you wanted to take on self-employed, in essence, valuers? So for me, it was pretty much born out of a frustration of salespeople not getting off their arse. When we, yeah, you can say what you really that. like. When you say salespeople, to what, valuers? Agents. So, Same thing? Yeah, I don't believe in the titles of Lister, Neg, whatever. It's just, I'm a really good agent. Do you need some help? So simplify it. A big part okay. of our model is simplif simplify everything. Okay. But um, basically, a, a, a one man or one woman Neg stroke valuer. Yeah. Yeah. Supported by assistants. Yes. And great tech. Okay. So why do you think people are lazy? Um, why, you know? I mean, look, look, at your, look at your staff. You, you ask them to, for, for training and they still don't do it. Uh, they're not lazy. Okay. They're busy doing the work. So their view, their view, they've, they've been proactive and they're doing the work. But when it comes to training, it's a bit like the, the old analogy about sharpening the saw. Yes. You know, how long do you spend actually sawing and how long do you spend okay. sharpening the saw? And my view is you definitely need to sharpen the saw before you use the saw. Because one thing that I've noticed, with, with, especially with valuer listers, is that they are a truly atrocious uh, business generation. Truly atrocious. Prospecting. Prospecting. My thing. I love is that because they're pigeonholed into this is my job role and... This is what I do. I it's go almost like the negs are expected to generate them their appraisers, isn't they? They just rock up to the door and hopefully sign it up. How many times have mm. you employed a young whiz kid from one of the corporates who, who basically is your arch nemesis and you employ them as an independent agent and they basically sit there like a prized stallion in the corner not doing anything? We all hear those stories all the time. Yeah. But I think it's the trouble with the... In uh, <clears throat> let's not be too out there. No, you can be if you want to be. No, I don't want to come across an ass, but um, I think it's generally a kind of with social media getting bigger and bigger as well. Like just that hustle and just that, we're saying earlier, you know, ring your aunt, your great auntie and just see if you know, there's anyone looking to sell. Like just be proactive. Um, Do you want to know why? Go on. What do you tend to find, because I like profiling people, mm. okay, and the vast majority of people who are make good valuers are, if you, if you can imagine you've got a balance here, one is they're quite outward going, and the other side is they're quite reserved. Why would you put valuers? Outward or reserved? Outward. outward. Yeah. Could we agree with yeah. that one? Yeah. The next bit is I want next question I want to ask you ask you is it are it, it, are valuers more people people or are they systems people? What I mean and a great way to answer that, because everyone says, Well, I'm a people person, is if you try and persuade someone to do something, do you try and persuade them as a person, you know, go on mate or mate and pally? Or you, right, this is how you're going to do it, and this is the system, and you're going to do it. So they're either systems orientated or people orientated. So where do you think most valuers are? People orientated or systems orientated? Mm. I'm going to go for people. Yeah, I'm, I'll go for yeah. people. I would agree with people. Yeah. But I think you've also got to have the knowledge of the system and the ability to explain the system. So I think you, you've more people orientated, but the systems do still. Of course, I mean, don't get me wrong. You, you, you can't be just a people person and not know a system. But and, and you know, likewise, I know you. You two, you are outward going as opposed to reserved. Yet, due to the nature of your role and the, the roles that you're in, you've gone from more people orientation to more systems orientation. I know you. I can tell by looking at you and talking to you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so you were a valuer to start with, both of you. And, you know, this is why most valuers don't... Well, that's why some great valuers make rubbish branch managers. Because they're great... You know, it's like a... a lot, you know, just because you're a great valuer doesn't make you a great manager, does it? Mm. 
to yeah. agree. Great managers. Okay, and that's why a lot of valuers don't make great managers because they're very they're good at listing, but they're not very good at systems and managing people, and doing things and doing this, this, and this, and this, which you need to do as a manager or a boss. Anyway, cut to the point with valuers, because they are people outward going people people they crave acceptance and love of people they want they want the acceptance from other people they want the love but the downside is the biggest thing they fear is people not loving them rejection they fear their biggest fear is rejection and if you think about it when you start cold calling people you're getting no's all the time and this is where i think you perry and i've actually said this to a number of agents you with your the, your magic with your hub model is the fact that you what's his name who's the who does the ring outs Lee Jen Clive Lee Jen Clive okay Gosh. now Lee, Lee. okay now Lee, <laughs> Lee Jen Clive is a people person but he's reserved mm, yeah very reserved yes he's not a systems person letting agents are system orientated reserved mm. people like Lee Jen Clive is a reserved people person. There's not many people those in the industry. Now they hate change, but if you give them a structure of what to do, they will just be on the phone all the time. Yeah, I mean I did help him. He's the just and I, just to label that a little bit because I think that is if you can find that person and I didn't find Clive. Clive found me, so I can't exactly say I've got the best recruitment process in the world. <laughs> like, um, but. The, the guy's a machine, but he did still want some coaching. He didn't. He didn't. He didn't realise he didn't need any coaching because you just give him a phone and he'll just sit there and not even engage. It's eight hours straight, not even talk to someone. He doesn't even eat. Like he has breakfast and dinner at home. He doesn't eat during the day. Um, and he's just, for example, banked twenty grand this month from a Thompson local cold call list to insolvency mm. practitioners. Cold, oh, wow. cold call. So. It, it, Anyone tells me out there that there's that, that he's dead and no, and no business out there, mm -hmm. I'll just say, come see Clive for a day. Right. Like, it's ridiculous. See, it's interesting. I, I've been talking, I'm in a very lucky position. I get asked to go and talk to lots of people, and people are asking my opinions on these hubs because they're thinking of setting up. Because I, I'm a, I get to talk to lots of interesting people. And everybody's looking for these bloody unicorns, which are great listers who can self generate. They really are like sodding unicorns. Yeah. Mm. So what you, what, where I think you are very clever, if you don't mind me saying this, is that you need a damn good lister who can convert, but you also need someone feeding, feeding him, feeding well, him at really, the end. Because the, you need a bit of both. the simplification yeah. of the of the agent assistant model works well because they can be them and they can be they can be people people and the girls in the office bless them they're amazing and the agents couldn't do nowhere near as good as they do if it wasn't for the girls and at the same time. The balance of we've we've got this two thirds one third rule. You know we will do all we can as a business to generate them two thirds of the appraisals they need, but they still need to bring a third in themselves. They, they've got to bring in their bit of the bacon as well. Yeah. What's your thoughts? That's a great idea. Um, we were looking we're looking at how we expand beyond where we are now. Um, geographically, there's a few locations for us. We've got sea on most sites, so uh, can't really go too far in that way. Um, <laughs> Opportunity. Well, opportunity, yeah. Floating city. Yeah, a bit yeah. like Dubai. Yeah, it's kind of like just <laughs> spread out. But no, I think we, we've got areas we can that. Anyone who's on the southern coast always used to exceed 12, 30, 180% of it's more of that. Yeah, yeah. 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 Go yeah. on, sorry. Guys. It, it doesn't help. That's what I'm saying. You've got to go in one direction. Oh, That's all you've got to do. Yeah. Into, but, into pop group references. But I also have. think, sorry, carry on. Uh, but I, like I think there's places we'd like to go. I don't think I would want to open an office in those places. But I think if we had somebody focusing on those areas who knew the area, who'd worked in the area, who was good at valuing in the area, knew the people in the area, I think that would work with the support we can provide from within our current branch network mm. with making a few changes okay. and so on. So I think it could work very well for us. Well, that's that's going to have solar shift in too, isn't it? Yes. But well, so they've been through a bit of a restructure that they've announced. And mm. they're moving to these kind of key branches where they've got a bigger a bigger footprint from a, from a, from a key branch. And I think everyone's going hub crazy at the minute like it's a bit of a buzzword isn't yeah it? and I went I went to the Cotswolds recently and consulted for an agency got six offices and um, I'm like keep your offices just because I've got you know we've done the hub at the time when it was the right time to start the business like that mm. you haven't got all of a sudden shut six offices when actually they could be working for them very well mm. and they're quite passionate about keeping their traditional values yes. so we're quite a you know out there kind of business and, and we, we, we know our client type and we're not trying to serve everyone they know their client type and their client type, like you just said, yeah. receive well to six offices covering Cotswolds. I, yeah. I think hubs work well if you're in cities or big towns where you can chop the town up, but not in little baby towns. I'm not sure it would work for you.